And now on Who's Views, it's time for the latest headlines with JT and the Hootastic panel. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Who's Views. It is Headlines. Nice to see you. How are you doing on what has been a really nice, pleasant spring, sunny day for most of the UK today? Oh, it's really cheered me up. I wonder if that mood's going to last throughout to this particular show. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I hope so, because we do have a very special guest joining us very, very shortly. Uh, joining me from the Who's Hasty panel tonight, no Paul tonight, so because he's got to work. So hello to Paul. Hope everything's going OK. But I do have... The one and only third doctor ian is here hello 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 yeah, yeah. where's that rain gone I, I didn't know what to do today don't mention it don't mention <laughs> the rain <laughs> we don't want any of that do we not at all no, not we at don't. all we don't. No. but we are here again nice to see you all thank you so much actually uh, for everybody joining us again we've got dalek i love you here who is saying to us good evening you lovely people good evening to you dalek i love you was it sunny down in liverpool let me know. I'm sure it was. And Liverpool always shines in the sun. John is saying to us here, this should be good. Shines in the rain as well, but I'm biased. Yeah, this should be good, said John. It really should be. We've got some fantastic stuff coming up about what we were talking about, um, about this new Doctor Who fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion. That's all on the way for you very shortly, because we were talking about that on Sunday, weren't we? Mark is coming up with a new, another tagline for me. Whose views is the place for news on time and relative dimensions in space. Keep that coming, Mark. We love all this, don't we, Ian? They're quality, they're quality definitely. <laughs> they really are. Um, again, thank you very much for Kirsty and Garbage who are joining us in the chat, making sure everybody is absolutely fantastic and uh, happy in there. Kirsty says, I like the jumper. What, this one? <laughs> yeah. I'm getting into the summer look, Kirst. That's what it is. <laughs> it's all coming through now. It gets a bit warm in the loft now, if you've been watching this show previously. Paul, hello, Paul. Nice to see you. Timescales is here as well saying good morning. Good morning to you over there in San Francisco. Hello, um, yeah, Craig. Hello, Craig. It's nice to see you. You can have our rain with pleasure. Where are you, Craig? Remind me where you are, but I don't want it. We've had enough. Do you know, I was saying the other day as well, over here in the UK, we've had a lot of rain over the winter. Um, a, a lot of rain. And apparently they say if it gets really hot and there's a hose pipe ban here, they haven't got enough rainwater collected because they haven't done it properly. We laughed at that the other day, didn't we, Ian? We did. It happens every year. You you pay all your taxes for the authorities to provide these services, and they seem to fall on their face every single time. So it's that typical example of you have one job. Exactly. You know. yeah. <laughs> hello, Gemma. It's nice to see you. Hi, Stephen is here with us as well, saying hello, hello. I'm morning from Oz, says Cybermatch Strikes. Now, I believe Cybermatch Strikes is very, very, very early for you over there. Is that correct? So if it is, thank you so much for getting up at, what, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning just to come and join us. Now, I believe that's, if it is dedicated. We know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> oh, look, now Craig is saying to us, he's in Cleckheaton. West Yorkshire. Well, yeah. North Yorkshire hasn't had any. Well, there you go. Hi. Yes. And also, look at this, Dalek Decimus. Oh, look. Hello. Good evening to you. And I love that little picture there of that particular Dalek. Is Dalek Absolutely. Decimus coming to Scarborough this weekend, I wonder? Oh, yeah, because you're going to be there on Saturday, aren't you? Mm. Um, let's see. Who else we got there? Well, yes, lots and lots of lead people in the chat with us as well. But nice to see you. And Craig is saying, bye, Eck. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> happen. happen. Bye. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for our very special guest to come on to tell us more about his uh, his brand new uh, Doctor Who fan film, have you heard there's been some developments over the last couple of days uh, when it comes to the TV version, <laughs> the official version, as we say? Um, I don't know if you've seen all of this headline uh, on um, Who viewers, but uh, we're going to put them onto headlines for you now because yesterday, BBC Bad Wolf and. Uh, Disney obviously put out a new picture. You may have seen this. I put it onto the channel. But what, do you, what did you make of it? If you haven't seen it, here it is now. Uh, and I've been racking my brains as to why this um, rings a bell, why this looks familiar to me. It reminds me of the book from John Nathan Turner's book from back in the day of the Doctor Who the Companions, Ian. 
actually, yeah, I hadn't thought of that, but I can see where you're coming from. There. Yeah, because it has yeah. it had the same co sort of color scheme and all those little planety things around it. So if you've got John's book from back in the day, Doctor Who the Companions, what do you think? Hmm. Yeah. There it is again with the tagline, your cosmic joyride awaits. I, st I really don't like that at all. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, joyride. Sorry. Yeah. They also did the um, landscape version, in case you haven't seen this version. Huh? So that's given us a lovely picture of Shooty, which YouTubers all over the place will be uh, looking to use for their thumbnails. I mark, mark my words, that'll be on the way. So there you it's go. Very so I could be grateful for that, I suppose. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do, what do you all think about that in the chat? Uh, nothing much, actually. Oh, hang on. Millie looks cool, says Kirsty. Shooty looks like a Snapchat filter. Yeah. Yes, Craig is saying similar companions book vibes. It does have the air of a of a, an AI generated, doesn't it? Yes. I was going to say, what do you think? What do you think? It does It, it does have that sort of thing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we've also got garbage saying, it's another bland image. All these images, week after week, are showing us nothing. Um, looks AI. Timescales agreeing with you. And, and Neville is here. Hello, Neville. Nice to see you. Joyride makes it sound like he stole it. Well, I suppose he did originally, didn't he? You know? Yeah, true. Well, Dalek, I love you saying joyrides. I don't think so. Did and Cybermatch. Steal him? You are. Or did the TARDIS steal him? No, don't go. No. And uh, yeah, Cybermatch Strikes is saying that's a lot of planets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, there you go. So that's new. What, I, I don't know. For me, it doesn't, it doesn't smack of any sort of excitement or energy. Um, you know, and that's what can be done with, with, with artwork today. I mean, it's it's pretty. Don't get me wrong; it's pretty, uh, but I don't know. I think they should have had something with the monsters in, or something like that. Do and you remember them. that? Do you remember that pullout in the Radio Times for the start of series two? So Tenant's first series, and you sort of folded it out, and it was three pages wide, and it was it was uh, obviously Tenant and um, Billy Piper and various things, including the cyber um, big cheese with all the. <laughs> Uh, cyber controller. <laughs> yeah, that's the word I was totally failing to find. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and various other things. It was. It made you think this is going to be really exciting. This looks really, really good. That that doesn't suggest anything of what they've got coming at all. It, it's what what's it? They could use that outside, say, an exhibition, and it could be yeah. Yeah. a new exhibition. That could be the front of a record an LP or a CD or a DVD or whatever, but you wouldn't know what it was a record or a DVD of. It's, it, it, it's, it's bland in a way. It's strange you say that, because I'm expecting that to be the cover of the um, the box set for the Blu-ray. <laughs> Just like they did with the one, the, the, the coloured one, you know, all the, all the multicoloured behind them, they used that for the DVD. Well, that yeah. was that, you know, it's all, it's, that that's a bit more promotional for you. And also, right now, today, in the last few hours, actually, there has been a bit more promotion, if you haven't seen this. Um, yes, so there's been a magazine article <clears throat> that's been published online, and it carried this picture of Shooty, I'm assuming in costume. So this is Entertainment Weekly. Now this has gone on with a video which you can find on our Facebook page and of course the official platforms. Now what you can't see that Shooty is lying on there is a clock and the hands are, well one of the hands is a TARDIS and he's basically using the sonic screwdriver to, to activate the clock and there's a bit of jazzy music and stuff like that on it and it's it's more or less saying oh you know he's on the way you can have a look for it you know after the show after the show and after we've met with philip after the show go and have a look at that um but that that's it and he's in this now this is one of I, i'm assuming one of the doctor's costumes um and it seems to be some form of cord kilt over trousers i quite like the boots and then a bomber jacket which is very sort of 80s looking so this doctor seems to like the 80s appreciation there's another nice one here of shooty actually as himself um doing what shooty does but this is all in entertainment weekly right now so there you are and there's also a video if you go to our facebook page um we've shared the video from entertainment weekly where shooty is reviewing the doctors up to him 
Um, we are going to be coming back to that because this show's about Philip, but we will come back to that probably on Sunday and gives you a chance to all look at that and then we can all come back and chat about what we think. So go and have a look at those. They're on our Facebook page, which is Who's Views. You can also probably get them on the, the official Doctor Who stuff as well now. And also you can have a look at Entertainment Weekly. So we will come back to that on the next headlines, if, if that's all right with you. But what was the initial reaction there for you? Uh, Jack is saying he's tired of all the, of the model fashion shoots with the guy. Zero, zero doctorly vibes. Couldn't say that at all, sorry. Um, <laughs> what's this? Oh, who's this up here? Gosh, the chat is going so fast again, Ian. It's fabulous. Richard. <laughs> Richard is back with us. Oh, please, no. What the hell is he doing? Tart and cringe. Hey, the Bay City Rollers got off on it for years, mate. Tell you. <laughs> Drop me out with that costume, says our resident youngster, Kirsty. I have, again, I have no idea what she's talking about. I mean, what it did it did make it did make Colin Baker's costume seem understated a bit. <laughs> and Blue Worm, going. Blue Worm is saying, "I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neville is saying, "What on earth does he look like?" Blimey, I'm sounding sounding old now. I have to say, I thought that about myself earlier when I looked at that costume and I thought, "What is that?" I thought, "Is that something I would have worn though when I was in my..." 20s i don't know i can't really remember the 90s um what else we got here um there we go it look a bit like something that would be wearing walking down a, a catwalk somewhere doesn't it by one of the more he's a high designers. fashion doctor isn't he he's a high fashion yeah. doctor but you know anyway um remove the tardis and the logo and it's an ad for a nightclub that's a good point yeah. Um, take away the logo and the, and the tardis and it's generic space yeah. whimsy says paul and Cybermatch Strikes is telling us that he likes the Bernard Lodge logo. Well, we all love the Bernard Lodge yeah. logo, don't we? But anyway, go and have a look at all that stuff from Entertainment Weekly. Go and have a look at the video, and we will be coming back to that on our future headlines. So you can come back and tell us what you think. In the meantime, we're going to carry on from where we left off on Sunday now. And we were talking about fan films. And could they possibly be the future of The Doctor, weren't we, Ian? We were indeed, and yeah. uh, it was quite a good discussion, I thought. Absolutely. It was, and hopefully it's going to continue to be now as well. Now, we first came across this as well. Well, Paul first came across this in this. This, uh, this project has been getting a bit, of a, a bit of coverage, actually. This is Nation Simru, which I hope I've said right, but Nation Simru uh, watched the Doctor Who movie being filmed. So this came from the 8th of April. Uh, and this is where we first saw this. And they had a nice little um, a nice little write-up about the making of this film. So that's when we sort of became a little bit more aware of this. And uh, obviously, we then um, approached a young gentleman called Philip Roy, who's behind it all. And he's, he sent us some pictures, as you know. He sent us some pictures on, um, on for our show on Sunday. And we were looking at them. It includes things like this, which is the TARDIS in the time tunnel. I love mm. saying that again, the TARDIS in the time tunnel. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but we thought, right, let's reach out to Philip and ask him what it's about. And I'm delighted to say, for your delight and delectation, everybody, he's joining us here. Fingers crossed that all the technologies work up. But let's welcome to Her's Views. It's the one and only Philip Roy. Hello there. Can you hear us? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the delights <laughs> of live streaming. <laughs> He's That's been sitting fun. there all this time. We bring him on and he disconnects. There we go. He's, he's coming back now. Let's hope that this works. Let's bring him back in. Let's see. Are you there? Can you hear us? Oh. <laughs> oh, goodness it's me. It's, it's, he lives in Wales. What more can I say? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not like down at the lowest part of one of those valleys because you know his signal will be terrible, won't it? Oh, I don't know. So let's have a look and see what you're saying in the chat while, while he tries to sort that what's going on. Uh, Richard is saying, um, yeah, oh, we talked about the Tartan Cringe, didn't we? So that's fine there. Um, Anima Mundi is with us. Hello, it's nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. And he's saying hello to Kirsty, but that's uh, that's lovely there. What else we got here? Oh, Matt the Silent Wee Music King, hello to you. He's saying boo to Gatwa. That was scary. And Douglas is saying to us, would prefer more Doctor Who like photo shoots and not the model ones. Hmm. They're, they're really playing on the fact that he, he does come across as a bit of a model, doesn't he? Yeah. It, I mean, the Doctor's never been that, has he? I mean, do you remember the photo shoot or one of the photo shoots that uh, Capaldi did? Uh, prior to his first season, and he was coming across as very Pertwee. And 
I was I was very excited by that because I just thought that's that's a good refinement of a good look, whilst not copying Pertwee. It was it was riffing off it, and I, I was I was well up for it. I just wish he'd got some decent stories, but um, that that photo shoot got me really excited for the series. This, mm -hmm. It's just like something you'll see on uh, America's Next Top Model or something like that, or Project yeah. Catwalk or whatever it is. I have no idea. <laughs> but you're right, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, it does look like an ad for clothing. Yeah. Um, we'll have another look at the, uh, the pictures I've got there for you as well, though, because it, this apparently is one of the Doctor's outfits. I mean, he's, he's holding the Sonic there as well. You can't really tell these days because it's that flat thing that they're using now. Yeah. Mm, I, I don't know. I'm plimsoll. I don't know, but it, it's. I mean, what's with the clock? I mean, is that just staged for the photo, or is it supposed to be? No, it's staged for the photo. Right. It's staged for the photo because it's basically saying, you know, um, he's on the way. He's on the way back. He, you know, Gat was right. taking over. All this sort of stuff. It's part of that promotion, you know. Um, so I don't. I, I don't know stuck, where he stuck the second hand. Looks a little. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. Well, um, who else? What we got there? Uh, Richard is saying here the signal is not so bad in Wales that it doesn't stop Gat was who coming through. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I believe Bedwear is in the chat for us as well. Can you pop round to <laughs> you pop round to Phil <laughs> and help him out? Like... Lead out or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Neville is saying to us it's high fashion, maybe, but it's zero taste, definitely. <laughs> mm. And it's cool. uh, Bedway is telling me it's come Ray. Oh, Cymru. There we go. Cymru. Uh, it doesn't matter, actually, because we can't get him back. We, we can't get... <laughs> Phil got time scoop, says the time scales. He certainly did. <laughs> oh, I'm really, I'm really upset because um, this show was all for him. So hopefully he, he can make this work. Um, I, I tell you what, let's look at some of the pictures from that he sent me from the... Um, the film that he's putting together. Let's have a look at some of these. Here he could, let's, fingers crossed, because he's coming back now. Um, and we can look at this. So this was um, obviously the, the part of his uh, time, no, he's gone again. This is part of the time tunnel from his actual title sequence. You can actually look at this. Now I think Cursing and um, Garbage have the details in the chat, guys, don't you? About where you can get all the information <laughs> can't be just saying if you're watching turn it off and start it on again <laughs> is it is it is it the time to say that this is all set in that particular cushing universe it could be let's ask him is this all set in the cushing universe can you hear us philip I can, I can. I've been running around without a sonic screwdriver trying to get some uh, technology to work. Are you getting me okay? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Who's Views. It's lovely to see you finally because you were caught in the sodding time warp, weren't you? <laughs> I was, yeah. It's, the, it's this rift that they've got going on in Cardiff. It affects lots of things. Well, it does for me anyway. <laughs> Well, we've got lots of people in the chat saying hello to you. So thank you for joining us to talk to, to us about your fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion. Right, everybody, we do obviously have a little bit of a delay going on, so bear with us, because this is live. And that's the beauty of all these things, isn't it? Because I love it, because we never know what's going to happen with these things. But listen, so we've got this little bit of delay. I want to ask you, Philip, first of all, before we get into talking about um, Meets the Scorpion, have you always been a fan of the fan films that came around in the 80s and the 90s? Uh, if I'm honest, I didn't really get to see a lot of them. Um, I never bought the um, the the Stranger um, films and and all that stuff. Mind you, I did I did buy um, Shakedown, and I really loved that. I thought that was really well done with the song Tarans. But obviously, you couldn't mention the Doctor because of the because of the rights and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I I think I um. I think I only started watching a few of them when I had the idea of doing one myself. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, uh, tell us about this then. How how did the idea come to you? Well, it's sort of a strange. During um, during COVID, I I had to uh, scrabble for whatever work I could get, and I was um, painting and renovating some some bits and pieces in my uncle's factory. 
um, which is a food processing factory. And um, he's got these big, clunky mixing machines with big Thunderbirds buttons. Um, and I just started thinking this would make an absolutely fantastic Dalek control room or a sci-fi <laughs> control room. Yeah. So from that, um, I'd already auditioned for um, the part of a doctor in a fan film and didn't hear anything back. So, uh, so I thought, well, why not do your own? And um, I thought, well, I'll just do a little... Uh, maybe I'll just get a few guys with some Daleks together, do do a Doctor and the Daleks thing for about, you know, five, six minutes. And then I moved over to, to the warehouse next door to paint that. And I was doing that at night, and it's a much bigger warehouse. Um, when it's dark with all the lights off and you're painting in a little lit area, it was really spooky. And I thought, wow, this would make just the most amazing location for a horror film. And then I sort of had the idea well what if you what if the dalek um short film that you were going to make was a pre-title sequence like a like a bond pre-title sequence so not the main not the main story by any means and then after the title sequence then you start the main story which is uh starts off in this spooky factory uh and then i just started getting the idea from there really but um but yeah it was it was um it was more a case of I was writing the, the story around the locations I could get. Because I think with any fan film, if you can find a, lo a fantastic location, um, your production values immediately go up. And, um, uh, you know, the fact that it was my so it meant that I didn't have to uh, hopefully pay, pay too much <laughs> towards it. So I just started thinking, I just said, uh, no, he's, he's, been wonderful to me um really really good um with the, with helping with the location so so yeah i think from that really mm -hmm. would yeah. i be right um phil thinking that this is set in the cushing universe so to speak no i i, I was listening to paul talk about this um i think there's a little bit of cross wires i think i think it's got the feel and production values of the Cushion films, because I wanted to create a sort of uh, Dalek City corridor, um, and uh, I, 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 I like the idea of using um, movie Daleks uh, mm. because I think that I think that well, you can see from that they just look yes. absolutely stunning. Um, but we've also got some of some um, classic Daleks as well, classic drones. Um, so there's a mix of mix of the two. Um, I was quite. I knew I didn't want to use new series Daleks. Um, oh yeah. Not that I've got anything against them. I think they're. I think they're fantastic. But I think for the for for my Doctor and and the film that I want, I wanted it to to feel a little bit like the 70s 80s show. So I didn't think the new series Daleks would fit comfortably into that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I do love them. I do love them. I love seeing them on screen. But for what I wanted to do with this fan film, uh, I didn't think they would work. And I think looking at a lot of the, the fan films that are out there, it, it, they do tend to be set in the new series universe. Yes. And I thought, well, if my fan film is going to make a splash, it needs to be something different. So I wouldn't say it's it's not set in the in the Cushing universe, but um, there are nods to it. I, I think I've used the idea that it's all one universe. I think I think yeah. that's fair enough. Um, I mean, yeah. it's wonderful to see movie Daleks anyway, but um, as soon as oh, I see yeah. a Dalek, as soon as I see a Dalek in the Planet of the Daleks slash Genesis library, I. Uh, I automatically get a thrill of nostalgia because for me that's the best library of the classic Dalek mm. um, appearances. But the, the movie Daleks have a have a a gravitas all of their own, don't they? They're mm. just they're just an imposing presence. I, I think the movie Daleks come across. I mean, I I have just over there uh, an NSD Dalek, and um, but I still think the movie Daleks are more imposing than them. And I think there's elements of the new series Daleks that are based directly off. The movie Daleks for that very reason. Um, I think I think your choice of Dalek props is fantastic. 
We need, we need to ask you, Philip, as part of this, where, where have the Daleks come from? Have they been made specially for your film? <laughs> I wish I had that budget. No, I was going to um, say. <laughs> I, uh, I just... Yeah. yeah, I just put a shout. I I put a shout out on to some of the the Dalek fan Facebook fan sites and um, got a couple of responses in uh, from Dalek Decimus, who is um, uh, watching us now. So so the the Black Dalek is Dalek Decimus, who um, mm -hmm. luckily just lives uh, about ten miles up the road um, from me, so he didn't have to come too far. And he brought um, his other Dalek. I think it's called Dalek. X, which is the the blue top drone. Um, oh, fabulous! So we so we had two Daleks from from Dalek Decimus. There we go. Um, and then um, Dalek Decimus put us put me on to the uh, Dalek, the red Dalek, Dalek Drax. There we go. And um, oh, the grey drone Dalek, classic TV drone uh, drone Dalek, is um, a chap called Joe from. Uh, who lives in Liverpool? So he came down. He stayed with me for the Yay. night, uh, and we used him for two days. So we, so we filmed. Uh, we filmed over a weekend, um, and this was the first scenes we did. So obviously, when it's your fan film, and, and suddenly you, you have all these things coming together, it's it's a bit of a squeaky bum time. But um, <laughs> luckily, it all went it all went perfectly. Um, the, the only downside, the only thing that went horribly, horribly wrong was that um, the the warehouse where we were filming has yeah. um, a run of skylights on the roof. And uh, obviously you want to control your lighting um, in the daytime. So I actually went up onto that roof. Uh, there's a flat roof by the side of it, so it wasn't too too dangerous. And I, I bought some um, black sheeting and I gaffer taped it down so we could black out those windows, which was fine. Um, but when we were going to be filming on, on the Sunday, we had this most horrendous storm. And when we came in to film in the morning, all, all of the, this black plastic sheeting was just, you know, hanging off. So uh, I had to make the, the decision to, um, to try and black them out from the inside, which was... Uh, let's say, let's just say, health and safety wouldn't have been too impressed. Uh, <laughs> but we managed to, to re we managed to re stick the uh, the black plastic and and black out black it out so we we could control the lighting in the studio. And I think I think if you can see what we've done with the trailer, um, I mm. think where our fan film uh, gets a little bit more a little bit more of a production value on top is control the lighting. I think lighting. Lighting is so important to camera work. Um, and, you know, I've got a great uh, director of photography who really understands lighting. So, so yeah, we always control the lighting, which is why pretty much so far we filmed indoors only. We do have a, a couple of scenes um, in the script where we'll need to film uh, outside, but most Ooh. of it has been done indoors. Um, mm. Yeah, I love that story, Phil, and, because it it, it um, smacks of how they used to do things back in the day, you know, at, at the BBC. You know, oh, get some double sided sticky tape from the Blue Peter oh, Studio yeah. quite quick because we need that. You mentioned the trailer. You've been very, very kind to send us the trailer. We're going to add this to the now. Now we can't play this with the audio um, because I'm, I'm 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 basically very worried about copyright okay. straight and taking us off. But we are going to play this. So um, talk, talk us through this if you want to. Um, as we as we go through this, and tell us what you want to. So this is the, the official trailer that you've put together. Yeah. So right from the beginning, I wanted to establish that my doctor was part of the, of the the main universe. So when you're watching this, you'll hear a little bit of William Hartnell. So you go from William Hartnell <clears throat> to then me establishing myself as the doctor. Mm-hmm. Just see it coming up now. Yeah, in these very sixties looking. And this was filmed on the very yeah. first day with the with, where we did the Daleks. Yeah, so even yeah. then I was thinking about public publicity even at that time. And that's the the, the corridor we created. And yeah. not to William holding the the lapels there. <laughs> yeah. And then um, and then we go into the the title sequence. Now, I know you mentioned the other night that you were quite impressed by um, a title sequence for a, 
an idea of the third cushion movie called um, Daleks v Mechanoids. Mm. And, and the chap that did that, I watched that little title sequence with he did, and I thought, that's what I want for my title sequence. Ah, so if you do see that right. Daleks v Mechanoids um, five-minute film, you'll, you'll recognise a lot of the same the same um a similar feel mm -hmm. so there's jenny mm. the companion played by mandy um and and this tardis it's not cgi it's it's a model a guy called um, yeah. steve white uh he does uh, a lot of he, he builds lots of little tardis models and and puts in cgi backgrounds has them flying through space and i know steve so i asked him so i married him up with um with um, Adam Walker, who's doing the title sequence, and um, yeah, I think it—I just think it looks better than the CGI Tardises they use on the new series. I don't think you. Sort well, of yeah, know. I'd agree. You can <laughs> always tell I think, a CGI Tardis is CGI, and I think you I think a mod. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even though you know it's a model, it's a physical being. It's physically there, so it's got a charm of its own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this yeah. is the scorpion just off off shot. We don't want to reveal oh. the scorpion. I think that's our, our big big reveal that will come. Oh right, um, and that is a real. And, spike. Where, <laughs> and, and the and the jungle scenes you've got there, where were, were they in the factory as well? Did you film that there? Yeah. So where so where we where we built the um, the Tardis corridor, um, the the thing with, with this is it's still a working factory. So I I had to build. The TARDIS corridor on um, on a Friday with 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 a builder friend, um, and paint it, and um, we filmed on the Saturday and the Sunday, and then uh, I had to take it down, ready for them to again on the Monday, and it was a similar thing with with the jungle set. Um, we had a, a a little bit more time. Um, maybe a Thursday and a Friday, and then we filmed. We did two night shoots, um, simply because I wasn't going back on that roof again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, the, jung the, the 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 jungle set is is it's very similar to um, to what they did with Face of Evil, where you use yeah. um, vent pipes, corrugated vent pipes off a tumble dryer. You paint them. You hang them from the ceiling. Yeah. We rented a couple of polystyrene rocks from a local um, prop shop. Um, Fantastic. Some, some foliage that uh, I cut down and some hanging jungle uh, plastic bits from that I bought off Amazon. And when you when you light it right, uh, again, you know it's a studio set, but that's the charm. That's what they did back in the day. And I, I certainly wanted to do like that, where, where the fans would get it and go, oh, I love that. You know, they know yeah. it's a small little space which we redress for different scenes, but the fact that they they know that we've we've gone that extra mile to to create something like they did back in the day, uh, mm. and I just thought it I just thought it'd be more fun doing it like that than you know trying to do it in woods where you've got noise and wind and you know it always never quite works, and then you've got people going on their mo on their trials bikes and you've got to wait for them to go so. Yeah, yeah I thought true. doing it in a studio, when you can control the lighting more, and it's just got its own charm, then, hasn't it? It's got a feel more of more of the classic series. It does. I do. I mentioned this, I think, on Sunday the other day. This particular scene here. Now, obviously, this is a behind-the-scenes shot of, uh, of of setting up and getting ready to film, but this looks really, really good. Now, what is this in a factory? Yeah. I mean, what what is this about? Yeah, in, in terms of the story, uh, well, is it is it specially or, or, or built set, set, or is it actually in the in a factory? Is that what what it looks like? No, no, that that was a set that I built. Um, wow, that's a, that's a, a teleporter teleport device. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Um, and it's very very simply very very simply done. So, um, it's it's some uh, Christmas lights with a bit of corrugated. Um, diffusing plastic, and then um, just a couple of bits of plywood with some. Uh, they're actually um, salad salad trays from Morrison's. It's like a family pack of salad tray. <clears throat> so uh, I was eating quite a lot of salad 
<laughs> and then you just paint them and stick them on, and they look a little bit, you know, 70s Doctor Who, Blake 7 sci-fi. I love it. And that's I it. That's the charm. I love it. I, that yeah, I love that. That is genuinely of the time, isn't it? That is exactly yeah. how they did it back in the day. And you talk about yeah. a small set, but then if you look at the space that they had in Lime Grove, it's just exactly the same. It's the same mentality. It's the same approach. And it's the same use of imagination and ingenuity that they don't, well, they don't use today because they don't have to today. They just drape green, a green. studio in green and then, no. then everything's yeah. done. Yeah. post-production isn't it and Absolutely. this is this is genuine practical stuff it's fantastic we've got some comments from you from um the who viewers in the chat phil uh, our own Kirsty is saying to you legend and giving you five stars already and our, our jack is saying look philip gets it isn't that fabulous paul is saying fascinating said in a creepy mm. davros type voice <laughs> and blue worm it says my heart is melting Oh, isn't that lovely from Blue Worm? We've also got a question for you as well. We've got a few questions for you. Um, Jack was also saying you did a great job, Philip. I hope your doctor's adventures continue. Well, there you go. But you've also you, we've got this here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Have you got a TARDIS? Says Dalek. I love you. And tying in with that, Douglas is saying, is the TARDIS interior going to be more like Peter Cushing or the classic Who? What can you give away? Go on, spill the beans. <laughs> right so so we haven't um we haven't built the tardis interior set yet um we've we're, we're, we're i'm trying to find uh somewhere we can rent for at least a month um where we can build the set leave it up and film like i said if it was my uncle's place i'd have to build that tardis interior on a Thursday, Friday, film Saturday, Sunday, and then scratch the set on uh, ready for the Monday, and it's just impossible for something like that. So, mm. so we are at, um, places we can rent to, to build the set. Um, the I think the 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 biggest hurdle for me at the moment is finding a TARDIS console. Um, there are a few people that've got them, but they mm. because they're they're one to one scale. They're very hard to, to move and take apart. So um, I've got a couple of ideas of how we do that. But the TARDIS interior, um, I think it would be cheaper to do the Peter Cushion uh, style with with black drapes and a couple of bits and bobs. But I but I've I've got an idea how to do um, a TARDIS interior um, similar to the classic series. I don't Ooh. think uh, I don't think it'll be anything as lavish as as the new one, but I think I think the fans will certainly enjoy a slight variation on the classic. Oh, lovely! Interior. This is what this is what I love about these sort of things because you're able to put your own stamp on them. And as fans, we've all got our own ideas, haven't we? Now I'm going to ask you the big question here, and I mentioned this on Sunday, mm. as you know, because you watch the show. I love the fact that you've been very cheeky by filming this thing in Cardiff. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now, because of that, hasn't why why hasn't anybody come knocking on the door? Put it that way. Right. Well, it's it, I'm not filming in in Cardiff um, because of Doctor Who. I'm mean, filming in Cardiff because that's where I live. Absolutely. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's the reason and why um, and I think the reason no one's come knocking on the door one we've filmed like I said in on a, on a, on a set or internally so we haven't been out on the streets of Cardiff um, but obviously now it's starting to get a little bit of publicity um, but I I can't see why the BBC would that bothered considering the, the vast amount of Doctor Who fan films that are already out there, which use Ron Grainer's theme and which use the TARDIS and which use, um, you know, everything about the Doctor Who series. So I would, I would wonder why they would single mine out for special treatment, other than, you know, perhaps I suppose it would be a compliment that they thought that mine was in any way threatening their... their 
their <laughs> universe, if you know what, what I mean. But um, you could just, I, I think you on could our just budget, which is Daleks. probably less. You could just show three of your Daleks and leave them on screen, not doing anything for five minutes, and it would probably get more ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I think um if I was going to do if I was going to do a fan film and try and in some way match or duplicate what the new series is now, one it would be a folly because I could never I could never get that budget. So it was, it would always look second rate compared to. to to the to the new series so so my approach is going back to the series which i grew up with um and again there, there there's a gap in the market for that all yeah, i'm doing oh, yeah. is filling a gap of the market which which isn't there at the moment so so i, I would find it odd if the bbc were really worried by what i'm doing um and i think i think i know when you look at the trailer, it does look glossy. It does look like something that could go out on television. But that's because the, the cameras today are, are so good um, that, you know, you've got these high high definition cameras. But and, and because it's mod, it's a modern way of filming and editing in terms of camera techniques. So it does match a little bit the new series in that respect. But really, you know, I'm making my my sets out of plywood and painted yogurt pots like they did in the 70s yeah. now new new series doctor who isn't isn't doing that you know unless they unless they did a a very clever episode where there was a reason for it you know that it was set on some sort of 70s bbc new sci-fi thing you know so don't so give them ideas still sort of yeah, yeah, stop giving them ideas because that'll be series three i guarantee you <laughs> yeah well you heard it here first i, I want my <laughs> I want my ten percent if they uh, if they do that one. Um, yeah, I think I, yeah, I, can, I can't see it. I can't see it. I mean, the worst case scenario, if they did say, "Look, you you've got to take this off YouTube. It's breaching our copyright." I think I'd, what Ian Levine has done and say, "Okay, look, you, I've made this film um, for myself and the pleasure of the fans," and then I think I would just put it on a, a private link, and people could message me and get the get the password or the password would just go viral i think that's the way around it i think yeah. that's the way around it if it was a real problem um as you I, say I, I as you say would, though on on, on, the, on the fine yeah as you say though phil on the tube of who there are a number of um of new versions of fan films you know you don't, you don't have to send you 20 quid anymore and get a video very dodgily coming through the post these days because it's all there you know which is lovely because that's yes that's how we used to have to do yeah. it back in the 80s yeah. kids so yeah it's it's all there now so i i think you know i think it would be very petty of them if they said anything to you but you know it's 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 brilliant that you've got all the um actual elements there and you know it does look really really good and i think you're right about the gap in the market mm. Mm. I, I think the, the, the only th other film that, the only other fan film that I've seen that sort of it's that timing thing isn't Sorry, it yeah. go, go ahead I, I think the BBC would probably be yeah. shooting themselves in the fuss if they tried to um, censor anything that was done now because like you say th there's been fan films for probably the best part of 20 years of varying quality um and the technology that's available now allows a lot, lot higher quality things to be done. But I think the BBC would probably bring more negative attention to themselves if they did try and stop it than if they just turned a blind eye and let people get on with it, frankly. Um, I, th I think they'd be making a mistake. They should just yeah. let people get on with it. And I think the other, th the other thing, Ian, is, is um, that... If they did do that, I think it would. I think my film being like Frankie goes to Hollywood's relax. I think yes. I think we'll be get around, and everyone would want to watch it that, that probably wouldn't have been that interested before. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not asking them to to clap down on me, but I'm just saying I think that might be one of the results. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. One Absolutely. of the other things I was saying the, the only other fan film I've seen the only other fan film I've I've seen which 
which comes a little bit close um, to to do in the, like the original series. I, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's really good. It's um, it's called the company is called Doctor Who: The Classic Series Revisited, and they've released part one of a story called Mind Bomb, and uh, I think they're I think it's the it's I got, I got a feeling it's Australia. Um, mm. Don't quote me on that, but um, they, the the chap plays Tom Baker basically. It's it's Tom Baker and Liz Slade, and obviously with with different actors. Um, but they've built sets far surpass mine because they've got a crew doing it, where it, it's just me doing this. Um, and they've got consoles. It's got a real feel of um, Planet of Evil, the the interior scenes. Uh, and it's definitely worth a watch. Definitely worth a watch. Um, yeah, Doctor Who, the classic series revisited. For people on YouTube, have a look on there. On the, yep. tu the Tube of Who. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, that was the first one I've seen where, where people had actually built really good sets. Mm. It's. It, I just think it's lovely that, you know, they've come such a, a long way from um, where they started off, really, with the, the technology we had at the time. And, of course, the limited ability, uh, uh, facilities rather, that everybody has always had. Um, and, and the same with yourself as well. Thank goodness for your uncle being able to do that and what have you. And I just think it's great that they're still coming on. We've got some <laughs> comments for you in the chat as well. Uh, we've got Jack again saying here, Phil, I'm genuinely more excited to see what this doctor is getting up to than whatever we're going getting from the BBC and Disney. How can we support your fr your project, Philip? Um, you can either find us on our Facebook page, just search Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion, or there are links on, on the YouTube um, trailer. So yep. you'll see the links underneath if you want to help with a crowdfunding, and that would be that would be wonderful. I mean, I, I really don't want people to put in big amounts. I would hope that I'd rather have lots of people putting in a fiver or a tenner, maybe. You know, I've sort of said on one of the crowdfunding videos, call it the price, the price of a cinema ticket to watch the film. Because yeah. you know, obviously, this is going to go free on on YouTube when it's done. Yeah. So, so I mean, if we could get quite a few people just putting in a fiver or ten, it would all add up. It would all add up yeah. and help. Of course, yeah. um, We've got we'll Kirsty. I think we'll get made regardless. You know, yeah. I, I haven't come this far. Yeah, we've got Kirsty and Garbage yeah. putting the links for you to uh, Philip's uh, website there in the chat as well. So if you if you're looking for that, it's all in the chat for you. Um, Dalek Decimus, as we now know, is part of what he's doing there. He's saying, "From what I've seen, it looks damn good, and it's been a pleasure to have been involved." That's what we like to hear, isn't it? I do like I do like that avatar there with that gorgeous looking Dalek. And well, Richard, well, yeah. It's saying, excellent to see you pursue a dream. Make it like Classic Who, and you will have your audience and make a lot of fans happy. Was uh, Dalek Decimus one of the ones we saw parading oh, down the map? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Also, Dalek Drax, is, which is the red, the red Dalek. Ooh, so, um, Dalek Two Zero, yeah. who is in Scarborough, the, the, he was he was one of those as well. I think there was four in total, wasn't there? He was one of the other ones. Yeah, yeah. And the the um, one of the cl the classic Dalek that we had. The, the, there we go at the back. The um, the Chase Dalek, hmm. the silver and blue. Uh, that Dalek featured in a little sketch on BBC. I think I think it was to to do with um, celebrating. 100 Years of the BBC, and Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse did a black and white Doctor Who sketch. Paul Whitehouse oh. was playing a, a William Hartnell Doctor. All right. In a, in a sort of circular Daleks corridor, and, and that was one of the Daleks that they used, because it's so good, it's so authentic. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so I, I did look out with my Daleks. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and they do look fantastic as well. We've got filmed in super articulation here asking, would you think of making another one? Ooh. Funny you should say that. Um, I do, <laughs> the, the, the episode will, will or the, the film will end, will be open-ended. So I do have tentative ideas for, for a second, a second film or a second episode, but I think it would be, very difficult 
very different from this one in, in that I, I really wanted to do something a bit smaller scale, a bit a bit haunted house, Agatha Christie, Ten Little Indians, Ooh. you know, where you have a, a range of characters in some sort of haunted house where something's going on and the doctor, the doc so it would be a single location, which I think then we could film probably in a block of about, about, about a couple of weeks and just get pretty much all of it done rather than what I'm having to do now because um, I can tell you for now, I'm not, although I've written a few things, I'm an actor more than a writer. I came up with this idea for the story um, and I think it's pretty good. People who've read it think it's pretty good, but it's very much in the Terry Nation school of, of writing in that you, you start off, you have a mission to get and, and then you have the end of the mission but meanwhile getting from a to b is a bit of an odyssey and all the <laughs> all the the traumas and the and the things that happen on the way um but i think i think that keeps it for a first one it keeps it very in, it keeps it moving it keeps it interesting so there's always different scenes and different things uh mm -hmm. to keep the viewer the viewer's attention but then that's what we used to call yeah, Philip. We we used to call episode. I'd like I'd like a, a different thing, you know, quite a spooky thing. Yeah, well that's that sounds brilliant, but that's what we used to call entertainment getting from A to B to C and making it making you listen and pay attention. We have got a couple of questions for you in the chat as well. After Kirsty's telling us it's refreshing doing filmmaking without falling back on CGI. Uh, the first question I've got from you is from uh, Dalek, I love you. Given the time period and feel mm. of the trailer, does that mean no sonic screwdriver waving about? Very much so. One of the first things, I know there's a couple of publicity photos with me holding uh, a John Pertwee Sonic, but one of the first things that we do in the episode is is the Doctor loses the Sonic. Yeah. So for the rest of the episode, <laughs> for the rest of the film, he has to rely on, on his wits. Um, and I'm not, I understand the reason why in a 45 minute episode now they they use the sonic so you can open doors and things like that but i think i think it's gotten to the point now where because because there isn't the time for the episodes to unfold like they would in the old series suddenly they realize they've got five minutes to wrap up the episode and it's sometimes it's a little bit e too easy to just wave the sonic which seems like a harry potter magic wand um yeah. You know, I like the idea of the Sonic, but I think it should just be things to open doors and unscrew things fast, you know. Um, I mean, we, we've, in, in the alien jungle scene, <clears throat> it's not giving away too much of the plot that the Doctor is um, tracking a signal. Now, in, in a, a, a New Who episode, he'd be using the Sonic screwdriver. But in this, I like the idea, similar to John Pertwee, that he would make a little gadget. So... So the doctor is walking through the jungle, this jungle, and, and he's made a little gadget, a little tracker, um, which takes the place of the Sonic. But I, I just think it's more charming. You know, I loved, yeah. do you remember in Planet of the Spiders where um, uh, Bertwee's doctor gets, gets to Met Metabilis 3 and then gets zapped by one of the guards and he's got all this poison inside and Sarah has to go across to the TARDIS at night and, and pull back this little device that he's just got hanging around the TARDIS. And I mm. love that. I loved when I loved when the third doctor would make things, you know, out of nothing. Uh, and it had a specific purpose. Absolutely. Um, thank you for all your comments, everybody. You're watching Who's Views headlines. And as you can see, we've been joined by Philip. Philip Roy here, who's telling us all about his film, his new fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion. It's great to have him here. We've got another question for you here from Neville, who wants to know, it's obviously difficult to find a look, but how did you decide on the student teacher look for your doctor? <laughs> well, very easily, actually, because um, it's pretty much, uh, it's it's the sort of look I've been wearing for years. I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the 70s anyway. Um, and, I, and I'm also, uh, I'm also very into the, 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 the mod Northern Soul scene. Um, so there's, there's a, there's an element of a retro look to that. So that's really my look. Um, anyone that knows me isn't at all surprised by what I'm wearing in, 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 in this um, <laughs> film. But, um, 
yeah, I've obviously tailored it a little bit. I don't I don't normally wear ties with my leather jackets, but but yeah, I just thought um, I thought it's important to 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 have a a strong look without being but something that you could walk down the street it with and people not stop and stare too much. Um, mm. And it's not a costume in the terms of the Peter Davison era, era or the Colin Baker era where the doctor just wears that. Um, I've got a couple of different changes of clothes, but it's still a similar silhouette, very similar to what John Pertwee did. You know, he, he would wear, he'd have the same style, but wear different jackets from different episodes. Hmm. Yeah. Can you um, tell us? So yeah, I think you could um, wear that in the street and not get arrested or too many looks. <laughs> <laughs> we've um, we've talked about the Daleks and things, but your your supporting cast. So um, the young lady that that takes the role of the assistant, I suppose, and and the other supporting characters. Um, are they are they people that have yeah. reached out to you? You've reached out to or people that you knew already. How did they come into the project? Yeah, they're they're all actors. Um, I'm an actor myself, um, so I they're also friends or people I've worked with. Um, apart from apart from the chap who plays Scorpion, Lucas Edwards, um, but he's with the same agency as me. So uh, I was recommended him um, simply because he looks like Sweeney. Sorry, just read that. <laughs> yeah, um, I I. Yeah, they're, 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 they're good actors. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, I wouldn't employ, I wouldn't get someone in just because they were friends unless they could do what needs to be done on screen. So so, so Mandy, I knew I'd, I'd work with her on a, on a music video. Um, and uh, I, when I was looking to cast a companion, uh, I looked at her showreel, um, which is a series of clips of stuff that she's done. And it was very strong. And I thought she'd be ideal, and she's been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That's um, great. And uh, like I said, Lucas play Lucas plays the Scorpion, uh, and he's got a unique selling point, as we call it in in the business, um, in that he's six foot five. Wow. So uh, he's quite an imposing chap. Anyway, I'm. I'm a bit of a shorty at five foot eight, so so I thought that would be a good dynamic that he would be towering above myself and Mandy the companion. So quite an imposing, quite an imposing character. Uh, and then I think for every great villain, he needs a good second in yeah. command. Uh, you just have to think of Davros without Nida. You know, Nida is a perfect lieutenant to mm. Davros. So um, our sec uh, our second in command our other baddie is um, a guy that I'd worked with before called Brian Smith, who's just got this. Um, he's the chap that says, um, uh, you really are a very intriguing doctor. <laughs> and you see that in the trailer. And he's got this wonderful, almost Shakespearean voice. Um, that's Yeah, that's Brian there. Um, very, very good actor. And he also, I don't know if any Who fans watched a series called Anorax, which was about Doctor Who fans. Uh, they did about six or seven mini episodes. And Brian was one of the characters in that. Oh. And it was all talking about, you know, similar to, to, to what you talk about, you know, how, how to get hold of the latest character option, options figure when, when you can't get them in B&M and all that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've worked with Brian before. Um, and I think, um, I think, like I said, you know, you... <laughs> You don't necessarily want your villains to chew the scenery, to chew the scenery, but it's it's nice for them to nibble on it a bit. So, yeah. so we've got that that feel of the classic seventies and eighties villain, where they where they're just just on the right side of of ham. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got another question for you as well, Philip from Doug. Uh, Douglas Smith is asking. Um, which doctor has Philip based his around the most, or have you actually, as an actor, decided on your own interpretation? I yeah, I think I think if you're going to do um, play the doctor, and you know, as as a Doctor Who fan from a small child, 
um, you know, it was it was always going to be a dream to to play Doctor Who, um, but I I never I never thought that I would try and impersonate one of the other Doctors. There are nods to them. I mean, you see in the trailer where I where I hold my lapels as a little little tribute to to William Hartnell. Um, mm-hmm. People, if they're eagle-eyed, will will get little little nods of of John Pertwee. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, there, there's there's nods to the to the the previous Doctor, but I think I think like all all the actors that have played the Doctor, maybe with the exception of Pat Troughton, um, who's who's more of a character actor. I think I think there's an awful lot of in their Doctor. Um, I mean, you know, you have to look at Tom Baker. He, I mean, he pre- pretty much is Doctor Who, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, there's a huge amount of John Pertwee in 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 his in his Doctor. Um, so yeah, I think it's important to to, to do your own version, um, yeah. and you know, either fail or or succeed on that. Yeah. Um, I. I I don't know if you know, but as a, as a little as a little uh, trivia point, uh, it's not the first time I've played the Doctor. I actually played the Sylvester McCoy Seventh Doctor in the fiftieth anniversary. You know, there's the dream sequence oh. at the end. Yes, I did read that. All the somewhere. Doctors lined up looking at Gallifrey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I read that somewhere. Yeah, so so I I I was lucky enough to um, to to get picked to play to play the Seventh Doctor. Probably because I'm a bit short, uh, like you say, five for eight. So that's some advice. Um, Here's so, another question from you. Uh, so yeah, for so you, that, was a, that was a great, that was great fun. Is is another one for you from Richard? Is there a classic story that has influenced your film mm. the most? Mm. Good question. I would, no, I I wouldn't say one particular story. I certainly, I when I had the idea of doing an alien jungle i certainly you know i watched planet of, of evil and i watched face of evil uh, and tried to see what can i what can i do on my budget and and skills um on my limited skills from that and i think i think i certainly got the idea of using the vent pipes that sort of hang down and look a little bit by palm trees um in terms of no no i think i think it was just you know when you've seen all of, all of the Doctor Who's and, and pretty much all of the Blake Sevens, there's there's a, there's a sort of standard. You know, you get a, a sort of a good idea of how to do a seventies sci-fi control room. So, so yeah, I think I think I think the idea is like I did snatch a little bit from everything. But in terms of the Dalek pre-title sequence, obviously heavily influenced by the Cushion film. But I also I also wanted the film feel of um planet of the daleks you know when they when john pertwee's doctor and the thals break in um pretending to be spyrodons and then they get caught out and they're they're being chased down the corridors by the daleks i mean i watched that as a kid live and um i just found it terrifying that that you know they were running away but these daleks were always chasing and we've got an element of that in the in the oh fabulous so so i think yeah i think the fans will definitely get get it and and see 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 whether see whether the references are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Garbage is asking you, Phil. Um, it's amazing what an entry on your CV uh, playing uh, Sylvester's Doctor. How did that role come around? Well, I because I live in Cardiff. Um, you can imagine how excited i was when they announced one that doctor who was coming back and two they were filming it in my hometown so uh i've done my fair share of standing outside on a cold frosty <laughs> evening watching hours of you know filming waiting for yeah. david Tennant to come out and so i've done i've done that uh it soon loses its charm i can tell you now um, yeah. but i thought but then a friend of mine said well you know i've been i've been actually working on doctor who as, as, a, as a background artist as an extra Oh so, yes. So I picked their brains, signed up to the agency that that was supplying supplying background artists to Doctor Who. Um, took me a, took me a couple of years to get on it, 
but meanwhile i'd done some other really good fun stuff i'd done i did um I, i'd been on um sherlock and merlin and a few few yeah. bits and pieces like that uh, and eventually got onto doctor who in a, in a small part and then and then i think it was just just the fact that they've got all your details <clears throat> and i think obviously when when they're trying to match all the doctors to to the original guys that they, they they're going by height and look um and they must have just seen my profile and thought could he pass for Sylvester McCoy <laughs> yeah probably probably could and obviously <laughs> they superimposed the original actors photos onto our faces yeah um, yeah but but it's obviously it's our, it's our bodies but um, yeah so that's how i got on on it and then then they rung me a, a few weeks later and said do you want do you want to play one of the arcadians as well um you know where, where the daleks attack arcade it's, it is arcadia isn't it yeah in the end yes yes yeah so i so i did two two roles on that so that was good fun as well mm, that was yeah very good. And that that was a really that was a night shoot and that was really good fun uh if you ever if you ever if people ever hear danny hargreaves who does the the big explosions and everything talking about it he he still says to this day that that who that was his favorite thing to do on doctor who and it was it was big there was big explosions going off and uh while we were running away and all this debris so yeah that was really exciting actually that was a really mm. exciting thing and then the other thing I, uh, another childhood dream um was a, was a, a couple of years later or a year later i managed to play I uh, managed uh, a day or two as a Dalek operator on the, the Peter Capaldi two-parter. So I was in one right. of the Dead Planet Daleks. So, yeah, I've been a Dalek <laughs> operator as well on Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> Again, childhood dream. Childhood yeah, dream. well, it is, isn't it? That's, that's a real claim to fame. Listen, wh wh so where's, where's, where's the film up to now? Where, where are you at? I know you were filming just at the weekend there and what have you. You were busy doing all that. So, yeah, whereabouts is it up to right now? Yeah. So, after um, Sunday's filming, uh, which would have given us about another six minutes, I think we're about 51 minutes into this, and I've got a feeling it's going to come in around 70 minutes. So, I'd say about two-thirds, um, mm. but we've got some big scenes to do. Uh, we did quite a... It was an unusual one on Sunday in, in that everything we filmed so far has been quite a small cast. You know, the Doctor, the Companion, the, the two bad guys, and maybe one or two people as as background but this this was a scene where uh we had um 10 background artists playing monsters oh. uh as well as, as the doctor and and mandy uh, um jenny the companion uh and we had three makeup artists our usual four crew so it was i had to make a lot of sandwiches put it that way um, <laughs> but, but good a really good uh, really good day he does uh, the catering as well, folks. And I, 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 oh, I, do, I do everything pretty much. <laughs> um, but, I, but I can say, I, I can say from the, the, the scene that we filmed, um, it's definitely, it's definitely some of the scariest stuff that we've done. Ooh, right. I think, I think, I think it'd be adults hiding behind sofas on this. Because we we've almost gone a little bit down the the Robert Holmes Hinchcliffe idea that we've we've taken a couple of a couple of nods to horror films um, without getting gory or anything like yeah. that, but but quite scary stuff. Um, I There's you know I was looking that. back at what we did on the camera and and <laughs> both were saying quite creepy, you know. So so uh, I think we've got, we've got some good footage from from Sunday's film. Which all adds to the story, you know. It's just another element of, of keeping the interest in the story. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I've I've got to ask um, the. Uh, I know you said that you you're on, only no only, but you you said you're only five foot eight uh, and everything. But that that spider, I mean, <laughs> she looks she looks enormous and would be quite happy sat on your back making you shoot yeah. bolts of electric out your hands. And she would not feel out of place in Metabilis Three. I mean, that is a massive spider. That's <laughs> bigger than the kind of spider you normally see around. Yeah. Where on earth did that come from? Again, I had this idea. Um, 
I had this idea that if you were in an alien jungle, what what things have in there that that were scary? And I thought, well, you know, could you have some sort of wildlife, some 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 spider? And then I, I remembered um, there's that scene, isn't there, out of Doctor No, where where Doctor No puts a, a spider, a big tarantula, in, in James Bond's bed, and he wakes up at night and yeah. it's crawling up his shoulder. Yeah. And I yeah. wanted to do a little tribute to that. Um, and it, it actually, if you look closely on, if you look closely at um, at the Doctor No film, Sean Connery's actually got a, a plate of glass. Um, it's pressing against his skin, so so he doesn't actually make contact with the, with the tarantula. Oh. Uh, but I was I was very I was very particular that I did want to face my fear and have a spider. So basically, I reached out. There's a the, I just found a a South Wales tarantula keepers as you do, and um, put out a little shout there. Told them what what we were intending to do, uh, and this lovely chap called Gavin, um, who's got a few different things: uh, scorpions and snakes and spiders. Uh, oh wow! He he sort of goes round kids kids shows, you know, and gets them used to holding these different things, so they're not they're not scared of them. So yeah, he brought two spiders down. One was um, about half the size, so we just got used to that. If you if you know what I mean, it, that was crawling on my hand, and and I actually fell in love with this spider because it they move so elegantly, um, unlike the house spiders, which still terrify me to these days to this day but the tarantulas <laughs> move quite slowly um and they're, they're very elegant um so we got we got used to the small they, we got used to the smaller spider and then when we plumped the camera down he brought out the big boy which was <laughs> but um to be honest it, it, it i knew it was there but it, it wasn't really bothering me so um yeah we mm -hmm. got some good we got some good scenes i think arachnophobes will, will have a hard time but um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you get a spider in, it's great, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Well, it just adds to it all, doesn't it, really? Because we've got here, we've got garbage telling us here, um, if yeah. ever CGI was needed, a spider would have definitely been used for me. No real props. <laughs> so, yeah, well done for admitting that one, mate. That's that's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, we've also got, um, yeah. oh, look. Yeah. Rich, Richard is saying to you here, for, um, um, Phil, Robert Holmes and Hinchcliffe, he's in, which is wonderful. Uh, Dalek, I love you, is saying the trailer, even though a few minutes convinced me Phil is the doctor. Now, that's really lovely, isn't it? That's really nice. And Paul is saying to us here, I'd love to see this on the big screen. Now, this also ties us in with, it, with something that's on your, your pledge website. And Garbage has just pledged, and he's just found this out on your website. Your greenlit pledge website mentions a cinema screening. Has the date been finalized yet? So there you go, Paul. There is a planned cinema screening. Tell us a bit about that, mate. Yeah, I think that'll just be a, a you know a premiere screen that we'll, we'll rent a, a local cinema uh, or a lo local arts art cinema and um, have a night there, and then we'll have a question and answer after. Um, but no date yet. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what yeah. date the film's going to be completed by. So, so we you know we don't want to book anything just yet. No, I think I think yeah. the, the thing we've got to do is is, is help yeah. help okay. Phil to get well, the I mean, things uh, finished. That's what absolutely. we've got to do first. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but I, I've got to say that you know the response, the response to the trailer has been absolutely ph phenomenal. Just, just, I don't, I don't think there's been one, one comment that hasn't really warmed me. It's, it's all been very positive, and people, people looking forward to it. And I think it's starting to, you know, it's starting to spread out virally now that that people are saying, look, have you seen this to to, to fellow Doctor Who friends? So, um, so, uh, so it, yeah, I think it's, I think the word's going to get, get around. Uh, um, well, well, good yeah. for you because this, you know, this is one of the reasons we asked you to come on here because please do share this, uh, this, uh, the video here, share what we're doing here and put the, help to put the word around as well. Uh, Richard has asked the question, which I actually mentioned the other night as well, because I've been thinking about this, Rich. Yeah. Is the bowler hatted guy in the trailer a Time Lord? I can't reveal that, but he does show up oh. once or twice. 
<laughs> Done in the very JNT styley. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's that's when uh, I can't. If I gave away what, yeah, if I gave away why he was there, then that would give away a major, major plot part Ooh. of the story. Don't want to spoil it. No, there you go, yeah. spoilers and all that sort of stuff. And well, Blue I like Planet the idea is that, that he, he's quite incongruous. He, he's just there in in, in, a, in an alien jungle. <laughs> Blue Planet's <laughs> asking you when will the action figure and lunchbox be available? <laughs> oh, that's, an, that's an idea. I wonder. Someone will, I wonder if someone will do a custom. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, I wonder if someone will do a, a custom um, custom ca a character options, one of me. <laughs> Listen, it's out there now. It's possible. These people are very, very clever. If you want to, get it made up. I'm going to find him uh, fairly well on, his, on his website and also on his if Facebook. You get, if you get an offer from Disney, though, turn it down. Turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Say no. <laughs> um philip we've also got blue worm here for you saying this is what happens when the people who actually love the show get together and create isn't that lovely isn't that yeah. lovely yeah. well listen um we're coming to the end of this particular show now Phil. Mm. I, I want to say a huge thank you for coming on and telling us about this project it looks really really exciting we do have the links as you all know now it's in the chat thank you to kirsty and garbage for putting the links to the um the pledge website in there if you can give anything to help philip complete his lovely lovely fan film please do please do um philip you're, you're always welcome back onto whose views when you do get to finish it we want first look at the tardis and we want to know a bit more and we want if you know also we want everything basically because <laughs> this sounds really really exciting and and good on you good yeah. on you for doing it um and good luck <laughs> to you and i hope you can get it finished in in, in a reasonable time because we know these things are obviously taking a bit of time to to finish i think if we can yeah. encourage as well our uh, encourage well thanks thanks for having me on and being able to uh, promote it well. yeah you're welcome go on ian what are you saying i think if we can get everybody else that's watching as well to share the link to the uh crowdfunder yeah, as well great just to spread the word on it share it on on their own socials and things like that yeah absolutely absolutely uh we're getting lots of lots of appreciation for you as well a lot of people saying yeah, well done perfect. phil Absolutely. Um, and you know, you know, the, a lot of love for you in the chat for you there. Um, and also, Dalek, I love you. Is saying one of our other friends here, Daryl, could do your promo artwork. Oh, wow! <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> wow! <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, you know, you never know what could happen there. Well, yeah. Again, listen. Thank you again for for coming on. Really appreciate. It. Don't go anywhere. I don't, I don't, know, to, I don't know. Who's who's Daryl? Daryl Joyce. Fabulous artist. Re oh, okay. Recently bought out that big tabletop book of all his uh, artwork and everything. It's second to none. It's yeah. absolutely out of this world. Yeah. His his skill is incredible. Yeah, he's he's just oh. brilliant. Yeah, you would have seen you would have seen him in some of our other That's chats, fabulous. and also we use some of his posters for our Dal our Peter Cushing season. We use his posters for those, and uh, they're all they're he all on, on there, Sunday, wasn't he? Yes, he was around. Yeah, he's busy at the moment as well. But oh, yeah, Cino, yeah, I know. Oh, yes, fabulous. Yes, yeah. There you go. And and he captures Doctor Who so beautifully. Paul is joining us here as well, saying, "Good luck, Philip, and thank you for a brilliant insight. Can't wait for the finished film." Um, and uh, Blue Captain Jack saying, "Hope it all goes well, Phil." Uh, and so do we, because it, it, it mm. sounds like a cracking. Um, a, a cracking film and a cracking story. So, well, done. don't go anywhere. Stay with us, Phil, after the show. We'll have a quick blether with you after the show as well. In the meantime, thank you to Ian. Thank you to Philip. Thank you, thank you everybody, for joining us for this special edition um, of Headlines, all about this one here. Don't forget to go along to the, um, the, the, the website there and have a look. If you can give anything, please do. It will all help there. So go and have a look at that. We will see you again on headlines very soon don't forget tomorrow if you're watching us live tomorrow you can join us for our who's views reviews of the visitation a 1982 classic in my eyes with the one and only peter davison can't wait to talk about that and watch out for everything else that we've got coming up for you on the channel as well if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do we would really really appreciate that and don't forget to like this video and share it so we can get the message further afield about phil's fantastic work which is on the way fingers crossed i'm sure it's going to be so until next time, we will see you very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye.